Have you ever been reading the Bible and found yourself lost as if you were in New York City without a GPS and you've never been outside of Atlanta before? Well, I've been there too. Stay tuned. In this episode, I'm going to give you two more tips for interpreting scripture. In an ever-changing world, everybody needs a relationship with a never-changing God. Welcome to Bishop Littman Live. Well, hello and welcome back to another episode of Bishop Littman Live. I'm excited to share in this episode with you two more tips on interpreting the scriptures. Have you ever heard the expression, it's all Greek to me? <laughs> well, when it comes to reading the Bible, in fact, it really is. Nothing more could be any truer. In fact, it's all Greek or it's all Hebrew. Well, you see, the Bible must be understood for what it really is. Because the Bible was written in a far different time and to far different culture. In a different climate, a totally different environment. And therefore, the Bible must be read thoroughly and skillfully interpreted in order to be understood for today's times. So when we understand that, we have to understand these two important extra tips that add into last session's lessons about how to interpret the Bible. Here's number one. Be a nosy neighbor. Wait, don't touch that dial. That's not a mistake. That's exactly what I meant to say, and you'll understand it in just a minute. When it comes to interpreting the Bible and studying the scriptures, you have to become what I like to call a nosy neighbor. Let me give you an illustration of what I mean. One of my favorite 70s shows of all times was called Bewitched. Have you ever seen it? Bewitched is a show that features the Stevens family. There is the husband, Darren, who is a very conscientious, hardworking architect at McMahon and Tate. He works for Larry Tate, who is the guy under the monkey. Darren is married to the beautiful Elizabeth Montgomery, a.k.a. Samantha, and he called her Sam for short. Well, the thing about Sam was that Sam was not your average, typical housewife. No, indeed, Sam was quite different. You see, her mother, who is under Larry on the right side, whose name was Endora, was a witch. And not only Endora, but Samantha's twin cousin and her aunts and uncles all were witches. And this created a bit of a problem for Darren because Darren was quite the mortal man. He believed in being plain potatoes, just meat and potatoes. But Samantha would often use her witchcraft in order to make things happen. She had this cute little way of twitching her nose. I never could get that right. But she would twitch her nose in order to bring something into existence. Well, not only was her witchcraft a problem in their marriage, but her mother, Endora, was also a problem in their marriage because Endora and Darren had a love-hate relationship. They loved to hate each other. And because Endora would often just pop in, literally, without announcement, she would wreak havoc in Darren's life and taunt him with her witchcraft. There was an episode where Darren was turned into a monkey by Endora. And it created all kinds of havoc and discord in his house with Samantha. Well, the thing about this story is that it may have all been fine were it not for the nosy neighbor, Gladys Kravitz. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Gladys Kravitz. And she was the extra over-the-top nosy neighbor. Once she got an inkling that there was some things going on at the Stevens house, she would make her way as often as she could into their house, you know, asking for a cup of sugar or something. And when she couldn't find an excuse to actually get into the house to see what was going on, she would go and peek through the Stevens window because there had been times where a whole house would appear 
or disappear on the corner in their neighborhood. And Mrs. Gladys Kravitz was always on top of what was going on in the Stevens house. They didn't like her, but they tolerated her because they had to try to fit in with the normal, normal neighborhood people that lived on the other part of the street. Well, as soon as Gladys Kravitz would put her eyes through the window of the Stevens house, she would be guaranteed to get an eyeful and immediately she would rush back across the street screaming, Abner, Abner. And her husband, Abner, was always disinterested in everything she had to say. He was never paying her any attention at all. In fact, he wanted to commit her to an insane, insane asylum because of the things that she said that she saw. Well, here's what I need you to understand about Gladys Kravitz is there is a little bit of Gladys Kravitz in all of us. What do I mean? I mean that all of us have the propensity and the ability and sometimes even a high level of wanting to know what's going on in particular in other people's lives. Well, guess what? There is a divine place for your Gladys Kravitness. In fact, you've got to look at yourself as a news reporter. Think of yourself as one who has just snuck into the back of the room to get the scoop, to get the story when you're studying the scriptures. You are the news reporter. You are the designated reporter for the scriptures. And here's a fun way to think about how you can get more out of Bible study and apply this principle. You are now the designated reporter and everybody is waiting on you to bring back information. You see, even though Mr. Kravitz, Abner was not interested in what Gladys had to report, there was a whole world that is interested in what you will learn from Bible studies. That's why you have to be the reporter. Now, here's some questions that you need to ask as the news reporter for the scriptures. You need to find out who's talking. You need to find out what and where is the action in the story. You need to ask the question, what is the tone of voice that is being used while it is being spoken? And it's going to be important for your audience to know also what was the reaction to what has been said. So when you think of yourself as being a nosy neighbor with scripture, it simply means that whenever you approach a book or a story or a chapter, think of yourself on a snooping skill, schedule kind of thing that you ease into the back of the room. Nobody sees you. Nobody knows you. Nobody detects that you're there and you're just listening and you are reporting and you're recording what's going on. How did they respond to that? What was the speaker thinking when he said it? What did it mean to them? And what was meant to the audience? How was it intended? And then think of it in terms of how was it received? When you apply this principle of the nosy neighbor, it will help you to get more out of Bible study. I think that'll be a fun exercise for you to do today. So why don't you take some time today or this week and try this nosy neighbor principle and let me know how it works for you. Be sure that you're liking and subscribing in the and commenting so I can know how this works for you. All right, here's number two. Number two, don't create a cure for a passage that is obscure. Don't create a cure for a passage that is obscure. Now, there are many passages in the Bible where the meaning of it is not very clear, where we're not actually sure what the writer meant and what it would have meant to those that he spoke to. For instance, there's a passage, and you'll see this in my PDF handout. If you'd like to subscribe to my e-class, I'd love to send you a very detailed handout of every lesson. It's a great study guide with questions at the end that goes into way more details than I have time to go into in a video. But in that handout, you'll see a passage of scripture that Paul mentions being baptized for the dead. And what does that mean to us well, it's supposed to be based on what it meant to them. And the fact is, it's not clear. And so wherever there is a passage that is obscure, 
one of the m rules of interpretation is don't try to create a cure for that which is obscure. So what does that mean for us? Nothing. We can't apply it. We don't know what it means. There is no other reference to that particular passage. And the Bible, as I shared with you in the last episode, the Bible informs itself and it backs itself up. And so there should be other references to a subject or to a verse. And then we can compare the two and find the meaning of it for our own personal application. And so there are some passages that do not have a clear meaning. Don't be a doctor and create a cure for passages that are obscure. So it's very important that we understand that without additional scriptural support and a clear understanding, an obscure passage is not to be considered as applicable to our lives. All right. So that's a really important point because many people make the mistake of creating a doctrine out of a piece of a verse that they have no clue what it really means. And consequently, they end up in a place of confusion. So again, if you'd like more, I'd love for you to join my e-class and get very detailed handouts and it will help you in your study. Simply send an email to clearstudies at gmail.com. Well, before I leave, I want to pray with you. I want to lead you into the throne of grace. Remember that you can always send me a personal prayer request at prayerwithbishop at gmail.com. Let me pray with you now as we go before the Lord. Father, thank you for this time of clear studies. Help us to be more dedicated to you and to following your word and to understanding the principles of your word. God, I thank you for those who have joined me whether it is live or they're catching the replay or listening to the podcast. Help us, Father, to become nosy neighbors as we pursue our study of Scripture. And help us not to add our own flavor to those passages that are obscure. But help us to really gain the knowledge and the skills that we need in order to be better Christians, better believers, better students of your word. Father, I pray that you would bless this entire world and this entire nation, that we may again come back to God. Touch our president, touch our governors, our mayors, our Senate leaders, and all of those who are in authority. And God, we thank you for what you're going to do through us and in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, hey, God bless you. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe to the channel. I'm so happy to share this with you again, and I look forward to talking to you in the next episode.